Alice. Okay, we're going to round off, we should call that 1.6, that's good. What are the units on that? Good, so you saw that this is 193 times 10 to the negative 9 meters, and then you divide that into 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, divide the frequency, good. Draw our picture. That'll make that clear. So let's try to draw that energy picture. Let's show. Let's draw that energy level picture and show exactly what is happening here, as much as we can in the cartoon. That's right. How do you know it's going down? Because it's emitting light. That's right. That's good. And what, is, what else is happening besides the fact that the energy, that, that, besides the fact that the electron is going down? Um, it's emitting. Right, and a good, they, your textbook has a good way of showing that. They draw a squiggle for the photon. So this is a good way to draw these pictures. You draw the vertical movement of the electron, and then you draw a squiggle for the photon. Is the photon coming in or out? Because it's taking away that energy. So I just multiply this by h. That's it, yeah, that's right. So now see that they, there's, they just do it in one equation, so that's like hc over lambda? Yeah, well, you can see, you could just solve this equation for f, yeah. and, then you could, uh, and then you could put lambda into here. But I think you get more understanding of what you're doing if you put this in two separate steps here. So. Yeah. So what was your answer? Yeah, that seems like the right answer to me. Whose energy is that? The energy of the electron. Take your time. The energy of the photon. Because after all, it came from our photon equation here. 
Now, wait a second. If it's the electron that move, is moving, why can we use the photon equation? That's the thing that was worrying you, right? Yeah. But the important thing is, how much energy is this electron losing? As much as the photons gain. That's right. So even though, so this represents both the energy of the photon and the energy change of the electron. So you're right that this is the energy that the electron is losing, but it's also the energy that the photon is taking away. That's what makes it legitimate to use this equation for energies of photons over here. This is where I think it's very useful to actually draw this picture. And what we can see here now is this electron must be losing 1.03 times 10 to the negative, eight, nine, negative 18 joules. Well, that energy can't just disappear. Somebody has to take it, and this photon is taking it. Um, so we know that the photon had 193 nanometer wavelength. That allows us to figure out the frequency of the photon, and that allows us to figure out the energy of the photon. So to put that in our picture here, we know that this photon, maybe it helps to actually put this into the picture. We know this photon We know this photon is taking this much energy. What was the question? Well, what is the difference in energy? So to really finish the question, we should then say. that this energy difference is the same as the energy of this photon. Yeah. Conceptually, those are two different things. Um, but we can see that in this case, the energy of the photon must tell you this energy difference. Um, that's why, even though they were asking us for the difference in energy levels of the electron, you could still figure that out with the energy of the photon. Because here, the photon's energy would be the different how much the energy the electron lost. All right, so drawing this picture as carefully, as completely as possible, I think, increases our confidence on this type of One electron dropping always from this one photon. I believe that is the case. Um, it seems like you, you could do more than one photon at a time. But anyway, uh, whether or not that's the case, in the, in the problems you're likely to see, you're usually going to see one photon um, being absorbed. Actually, um, I guess I shouldn't say that's, even here that's not true. Um, the way, uh, um, I don't want to get in too deeply into this, but the way the laser really works, the way the laser really works is actually a laser is stimulated emission. So actually what you're doing is you put in a photon of this energy. And that actually kind of knocks the electron off of its perch. And then when the electron goes down, it actually does emit two photons like this. So actually, to answer your question, actually sometimes you do emit more than one photon. But I don't think you're going to need to worry about that for problems. As far as problems are concerned, we can just imagine that there's a single photon emitted for each energy transition. OK. All right, so you want to try to get in the habit of drawing these types of pictures over here. Um, and it's good to use a vertical for the electron movement and a squiggle for the photon. So you can tie those two things uh, together over here. All right, and here we just use this part of the flowchart. And we really only needed one number uh, because we already know the speed of light. And we know Planck's constant, so we really only need one number there. Okay, good.